November 4 is the Feast of San Carlos Borromeo. And for the rest of your life, in your ministry, for the church, with the church, in the church, let San Carlos Borromeo be your inspiration, be your guide, be your patron. San Carlos is the patron of all seminaries. Because the seminary system, as we have it now, is a mandate from the Council of Trent. And San Carlos Borromeo was the first to implement this in the Church of Milan. He was a cardinal at 24, younger than the three of you. But he did not use his power and relationship with the Pope to stand along the way of the mission of renewal. There can be no renewal in the church unless deacons and priests and bishops reform themselves. And San Carlos Borromeo is a great holy reformer of the church because for the rest of his life as a bishop of the church he only followed one motto his motto as a bishop was humilitas if humilitas brings renewal the opposite of it which is pride, brings decay. There can be no renewal in the church without deacons, priests, and bishops embracing wholeheartedly the path of humilitas. And a few moments before you receive the laying of hands, you will make a gesture of humilitas which is the prostration. In fact, some of your relatives will find the prostration more meaningful and dramatic than the laying on of hands. In their simple minds, they think that you become deacons by the prostration. In a manner of speaking, they are correct because you only become a deacon, priest, or bishop only by prostrating in humilitas. Your prostration on this floor is a gesture of who you are. Homos, human, humilitas, they have the same word, dust. You are dust. And from being dust, God breathed on you and made you human. But let not your being human bloat your ego. Let your being human always keep you in touch with the dust. Kiss the dust. Because the dust should be your friend. The dust is cleaned by sweeping the floor. But let us remember always, it is only by making friends with the dust on the floor that you can keep your feet flat on the ground and remember who you are. I have no English word for it. But Gerald, Billy, Joselito, with me, I say, we are all hampas lupa. I don't know the English for it, but I know what it means in our language. We are hampas lupa. We are dust, not even deserving to be called. And yet, 
in spite of who we are, we are called by the Lord. Do not forget your roots. Do not forget your brokenness. Do not forget that you are here. Not just because you are hampas lupa, who is also pasang awa. You are here because you are loved in spite of who you are. You carry to the Lord your brokenness from the family, your brokenness in the school, your brokenness because of sin, your brokenness, your woundedness because of you. And the Lord knows that after ordination, you will still break yourselves further. After ordination, you will still fall and relish the mud. After ordination, the Lord knows that you will still give in to your favorite temptations. And yet, in spite of the Lord knowing that, the Lord says to you, I call you nevertheless. I call you in spite of, I call you in spite of who you are and who you will ever be. But the place where you were prostrate is also another reminder of humilitas. It is not only a reminder for you to be humble like dust. The place where you will prostrate is between the people and the altar. Not behind it, not at the door, not at the sides, but here, between God's people and God's altar. Because in lying on the floor, you are actually inviting the people, go to the Lord, let me be a bridge, step on me. You are willing to be stepped on. You are willing to be ignored, to be taken for granted. That is what the prostration means. You are not just a bridge that collects tolls. You are a bridge that is willing to be forgotten. You are a bridge who connects people to God. Let the people step on you. Because this is not a vocation for more entitlements and privileges. This is a vocation for dying. And one day in your life as a deacon that you do not die is a day that is wasted. So your prostration is not just about your humble beginnings. Your prostration is also about your openness to be stepped on, to be a bridge for people so that they can get closer to God. May you not be a bridge that people will step on walking away from God. But there is still something beautiful about the prostration. You remember Moses? You remember Isaiah, Jeremiah? They were afraid to look at the face of God because in looking at the face of God, they knew men and women will die. So they covered their eyes with their hands because God was too much to behold. And in prostrating yourself on the floor, you do not only cover your eyes, you allow the floor to cover your eyes because you are not worthy to behold the goodness of God. In other words, the third meaning of prostration on the floor is the perpetual awe, the perpetual wonder about the mystery of God that you are so unworthy to behold. And you will touch the body of Christ and give the body of Christ to God's faithful. And you will speak the word of God for God's people. And you will proclaim the gospel. You are not worthy. Cover your mouth because your lips are unclean. Cover your eyes because your eyes do not always search for the Lord. Cover your whole face, cover your whole being because your whole being is not worthy to look at the grandeur, the holiness of God. You are so little like dust that you do not deserve to look at the Lord. And yet you will not only look at the Lord, the Lord will allow Himself to be touched by you. 
you will not be able to understand how much God loves you. Because in the words of another saint, John Marie Vianney, if you would understand how much God loves you, you would die. Because your mind is as small as dust, too little to comprehend how great is the Lord. Let humilitas be your path in the diaconate and God willing to the priesthood. Let your prostration be always fresh in your memory. That you are dust like the dust on the floor. That you are bridge linking people to the Lord. That the Lord is too much to behold. That the floor covers your eyes because your hands are not even enough to cover your eyes. Because your hands are too small to cover your eyes because the greatness of God is greater than your whole body, greater than the whole universe. Gerald, Billy, Joselito, Marie, I have seen you grow. Grow in body, grow in intelligence, grow in spirit. And I can say with conviction, also grow in holiness. But you are ordained on this day, the 4th of November, because you're called to reform the church by first reforming yourselves every day of your life from now on. We look forward to many fruitful years of diaconal ministry. But do not forget humilitas because it is only those who live humilitas who can be truly become apostles of this Ecclesia Semper Reformanda. Billy, Gerald, Joselito, God calls you Rise up with humility, rise up with courage. The Lord is more than enough. God alone suffices. Take courage. Do not be afraid. God is with you.